Greetings, sir and sirettes, and welcome back to Stellaris with me, Lathrix. And of course, welcome back to the most decadent of all doomsayer cults. We are the children of Crisis. In today's video, we are just going to be continuing to expand our influence towards the north and still need to decide if we are going to go down the route of becoming xenophiles. The reason is... We are meant to be decadent. We are a cult. We bring other species into our fold because they like the idea of our lifestyle, but also our beliefs. I'm sure we can preach them and slowly convert them to our way of thinking. A big party which ends in the end of the galaxy. I mean, it's not the worst plot ever. It's not the best for, you know, surviving, but ultimately it brings about something better in the end. So I really want to go down the route of being xenophile because it will give us access to, if we go all the way down here, there we are, xeno compatibility. This will allow us to have half species which will blend all of the species together, which I think really works with the whole decadent idea. We also, of course, want the Arcology Project. Now, before we get into anything else, there have been some changes. This is the new update, so as you can see here, the UI has changed drastically, pretty much everywhere, and it is a little bit weird to get used to, but ultimately, it does look a bit better. It is easier to use once you get used to it. Oh yeah, and we currently have the Calvins everywhere as well. Well, that's gonna help out a lot. On top of this, with the update, some of our Ascension perks have actually been buffed. First of all, One Vision now also does this. Pop amenities usage, minus 10%. That's wonderful. All of our planets will still have the plus 20% happiness. That is really, really nice and will make life a lot easier on us. And with Technological Ascendancy, you now have the rare technologies 50% more often, which is really, really nice. So... Let's just continue. Do we have all these colonies already planned? Yes, we do. Let's just make sure all of our worlds... Yep, lovely. Lovely. Now, if we wish to become Xenophiles, we need to save up 250 influence. Which will take quite a while, since currently we are consuming a lot of influence because of our neighbours. Hmm. That's a little bit annoying. Either way, I'll just leave all this going, and hopefully soon something interesting will happen. Just double checking our worlds. Oh, plus 13% here, so this one needs a little bit more in the way of amenities, which I'm already solving. Fantastic. Yep, plus 18%, which is being fixed. Plus 20%, fantastic. Plus 20, lovely. So pretty much all the worlds which are already sorted out are very, very happy. Especially the rich people. The priests are particularly happy. At 100% now. Glorious. And so the lowly Hello there, we have the uplift light. being completed. So we started this in the previous video, so now we should have a brand new species. Also, that just gave me an insane amount of influence. I need to double check the footage, because that is almost 600 influence we have now. Well, I'm happy to say we have a new species. You fellows. Okay, they are currently still in pre-sapient, but as soon as the month ticks over, they will become regular members. So, they are uplifted, and they are starborn, giving us bonus habitability and bonus growth from immigration. Okay, you're a pretty decent species, nothing too special, but still. Welcome aboard, welcome to the cult, you will help us in the beginning of the end of all things. But seriously, that much influence, that is a sign! I didn't even know that uplifting gives you influence, well that is a lovely thing. And with that, I think what we're going to do is we are going to become Xenophiles. Now, there is one horrible thing with this. If we become Xenophiles, we are no longer fanatic spiritualists. And I know, that's kind of the whole point. We are the Doomsayer cult. We are here to bring about the end of all things. But we're also all about decadence, and in a way, that's kind of how we worship. We are very similar to worshippers of Slanesh. We aren't exactly uh, moral. Well, I guess we are moral in our perspective, but still, you get the idea. Fine. I embrace you. So that will reduce our influence. Sorry, our unity a bit, but there we are. We are now Xenophiles increasing our... Oh, increasing our trade value. Yeah, that's really good of all our clerks. And people will like us a little bit more as well, which complete. is a very nice thing. Ooh, 
Several days later, all is well on the planet. Lovely. So now we're Xenophiles. I don't think anything really changes with our policies, but what we can do is now, can we already have Xeno compatibility, or is that later on still? Requires the gene tailoring technology. Okay. Which is currently what we're researching. Fantastic. So as soon as we get that, we will go with Xeno compatibility. Construction complete. Stranger danger. <laughs> Sums of our empire a little bit, honestly. Um, according to reports, newly uplifted... I can't pronounce that for the life of me. Citizens on the Prime grow anxious. Hmm. What is an alien to us? What is alien to us is simply opportunity in disguise. Oh, obviously we want them to be xenophiles, not xenophobes. Um, well, we want them to be authoritarian. One of the first leaders not to be from our initial species. Well, certainly the first scientist. And they are maniacal. Excellent. We must have the most relaxed fleet of all time. Just, you know, chilling. Not really fighting anyone, just here. That's all. Beat. Now, someone said something very interesting recently, which I am very, very tempted to implement. If we go to society, we are about to get the lovely gene tailoring, meaning that we can genetically modify our species. Maybe all species should have the decadent right upon entering our empire. It just makes sense. We have a leader, an excellent fit for the children of crisis. A governor of superb logistics, very clever, thinks ahead, likes long walks on the beach. Hmm, I wonder what your governor's going to be like. Now, one of the caravana types gives you a leader which increases trade value, which is great for us because, again, clerks, clerks everywhere. Don't know what you give us, though, but honestly, 200 food is cheaper than just purchasing one anyway, so sure, why not? What are they like? Well, to start off with, they are psychic. So, bonus unity and bonus stability. Waste management specialist, building upkeep minus, and eager, well, they're cheap, so that doesn't really matter since we already have them, but still. Hmm, bonus unity on its own might be worth putting them in the main sector. But saying that, our current leader is already, is already level 5 and is an intellectual, so that's really, really powerful. Maybe the second group here, increasing stability here will just give us more of everything. But also intellectual... Are they all intellectuals? Nope, you're not, but you're also psychic. Hmm. Well, at the moment, Unity is way outstripping science on these worlds, so sure, why not? There we go. Lovely. These poor colony ships need to go so far just to get over here. We need warp drives, or jump drives, or jumpy warp drives as soon as possible. More influence? Well, I would love that, thank you very much. And now, Xeno Compatibility! Thank you very much. Now, I believe Transcendent Learning has been changed as well. Yes, it has! Bonus Leader Experience Gain. Well, that is beautiful. Definitely need that as well in the future. There's so many things I want! Give me everything! Also, we can now have Engineered Evolution, but I still can't get the Psychic one. I want to be Psychic. Okay, so two slots for Psychic, level 1, level 2. Then one slot for Arcology Project. Then we have two spare. One... Actually, no, I was about to say one should be for Defender of the Galaxy, but we want the Endgame Crisis to succeed. But we also need to defend our borders until the Endgame Crisis has defeated everyone else. That's our Endgame. We will eventually lose this game, but we need to be the last Empire standing. That's our only victory condition. So with Defender of the Galaxy, everyone would like us more, not that matters in the end, because in the end I will also declare war with everyone. Can I justify this? I really can't, can I? All I can say is, we know more about the Endgame Crisis than anyone else, we worship it. So of course we would naturally be better at fighting them, but... I don't like the idea of getting that. If I can avoid it, I won't get that. But I'm not making that a promise. Oh yeah, there's a problem from something we mentioned earlier. I can't actually add negative traits yet. As you can see, they're not even available. I believe you can only add negative traits if you go down the biological ascension route, so... All we can do is improve our people. 
You're no longer going to die early. You're still going to be just as decadent, but I suppose we're now better at just making you live through it. What's this? Space for a temple? Complete. Well, glad we fixed that problem. Ah, now, you rackets. Nope, 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 nope. There we go. <laughs> well, that makes you so, so much better. There we are. You're now traditional as well. So, bonus unity for us. Fine, you can be deviant. Since I don't really mind that too much, and it's nice to um, have the bonus points. Okay, you can be fleeting and deviant. You have fully embraced our way. You are no longer slow breeders because you have fully embraced our way. And instead, you are now charismatic. You are charismatic, traditional psychers. Lovely. Situation log. I've only just realised how ridiculous this world is for um, scientists. Bonus physics, bonus society. Yeah, that is going to eventually be the ultimate science world. We really need to start ramping up our science and our alloy production very soon. We are so far behind in terms of tech and in terms of um, our military. It's kind of ridiculous. Thankfully, everyone loves us and we are in a really, really safe position. Well, unless these guys wake up and then, oh boy, that's going to be unpleasant. Isn't it the case that if you have an expertise in something, you increase the odds of that particular type of science popping up? I don't know if that's actually the case, but just in case it is, I'm going to be swapping you for you. I really need the, the psionic rare research. And one day, I'll be able to say that first time. Uh, still need some more civilian industries, which is really annoying, honestly. Silly temples. Thank you, Alloys, for being worth so much. Also activating all the campaigns. Beautiful. Okay, you just got there, so grab all of that and start heading towards these two. Hmm, now with you, what we could do is uplift you. Oh no, only four people. This is going to be a really, really low-level primitive world. Ah, we can't even invade you, I don't think. Um, I will study you. Unemployment everywhere, and that's because of the rackets. Yeah, when they got changed, they got booted out of their job, but then didn't get the job back, and now they're specialists and kind of just stuck here. It's going to take 800 days before they become workers. That's annoying. After a lot of bribing, research agreement. Lovely. I mean, I would much rather have the migration treaty, but you're just too far away. Or the commercial pact, but you have too many already. Darn it. I want more friends! They've now changed as well how upgrading works, which is really, really nice. This is one of those small changes which makes things way better. So rather than the whole fleet upgrading, what happens now is that the ships get upgraded one at a time, which means if you suddenly need to move your fleet out to defend yourself or go and take some new space, it doesn't matter. Everyone which has already been upgraded will stay upgraded. You don't need to wait for the entire thing to finish. Now, of course, you could get around that before by splitting the fleet over and over again and then making each member of the fleet try and get the upgrades, but that was just so, so tiresome. Now, that is glorious. So this species here is half racket and half of the Calvin, which means it's psychic and it gets the special bonus of extra habitability and extra growth speed. Yes. Go. Also need to make sure all new species will get full citizenship. Psionic theory. Lovely. Now the problem is we have some pirate problems at the moment, so... Yes to that. Boo! Pirates! Thank you so much, our long-standing friends. Eventually, we might actually be able to get all the artifacts. We still haven't found any, actually, in space. Apparently, we just don't care where we came from, only where we're going. Construction. I'm sure our current level of science is nothing to be concerned about. That's a perfectly normal number. Construction complete. We're the good guys here! That's why none of my trade value is getting through. System hmm. survey complete. There's a problem. There's going to be pirates spawning over here because our trade route literally goes through it. Also, I'm about to grab all of these, so don't worry about all these random resources not being used at the moment. So, 
maybe what we need to do is set up a patrol just around here. Now, thankfully, they have a lot of stations here anyway, so really, it's only these two systems we need to be concerned about. Well, we're strong enough to deal with them. Let's deal with these pirates and get our money. Discovery is finished, and with that, mind over matter. It's time to become psychic. There we are, all of the children of Crisis are now psychers, giving us more energy and more science. Now, at the moment, I don't think there's a way to spread our psychic influence to the other species, which is a shame. Since we do have loads of these fellows, for instance, which would really benefit from it. I think you might be able to make other species psychic once you get the final level of the Ascension perk. I really can't remember. What's that? A temple? Yes, it is. Lovely. Temples for all, and you're going to become a science world. Lovely, lovely, lovely. So as soon as that's finished, we'll build our first tech building. And more clerks for you. Construction oh, complete. it seems like before I got there... Yep, yeah, we're definitely getting it, so what's happened is they've dealt with the problem all by themselves. Well done, them. Although, apparently one of our things is still having an issue. This one. Why do you have... Oh, you have 0% because you're going down this route. So you're going down systems that we don't have access to, which means they're not being protected. And that's pretty bad because you are responsible for three different systems and four worlds total. Okay, so you... Grab that, and then do that. Oh, and by the way, let's build a temple! And another one! So currently, there's also a somewhat minor glitch where when you start off new worlds, for some reason, the game thinks whilst the world is being colonized, it has zero stability, which means there should be an uprising. So occasionally we have events like this occurring before the world is even made. That one happened way, way earlier. Now, the Stellaris team are aware of this. It's not a major bug. But if you see random things like this, well, that's why. We continue to evolve our way of thinking. The system capital complex is now created. And with that, let's go over to this for even more amenities. Beautiful. And with this, reform government. We could become corporate. Um, no, thank you. Or imperial. Which would be cool, but no, we currently are being ruled by the priesthood, so that makes a lot more sense, since we can have one leader and then change it later. Slaver guilds? Um, no. Decadent, yes, but no, thank you. Uh, bonus minerals, that would be nice, I guess, since we don't have too many miners, buffing them would be great. Uh, extra admin cap would be okay, I guess, not too special. But we just wouldn't be, in okay, this would be great, but we wouldn't be environmentalists. Okay, cutthroat politics, that would make sense. All fighting to be leaders, and yeah, that would be interesting. And that would make our edicts cost less, which is good, because we just lost some of that ability from spiritualist. Or we could have this. Extra growth from immigration. Hmm. We are going down that route, aren't we? Even though we only have one migration treaty, it is actually providing a lot of extra growth. Freehaven is that... Also, once again, more immigration pull. This society has a well-earned reputation as a free haven. The tired, the poor, the huddled masses yearning to breathe free, all are welcome here. Oh, that sounds so sinister when you think about who we really are. Yeah, that's perfect. Calvin, Calvin, Calvin. Um, <laughs> you're called Blarp. Glabber, Glubber, and Blarp. I don't know about you fellas, but I would vote for these. Still better politics than in the UK at the moment. <laughs> Vote for Blob. <laughs> That's wonderful. So I don't have enough influence here to actually help out, but what I really want is this one here. Okay. Agenda, a new generation. Bonus growth speed and bonus happiness. And he's called Lathir. It's my long-lost snake boy cousin. Vote for snake boy. I mean, they're all snake boys, but this particular snake boy. Sega, son of Enim. Welcome to our scientific team. We're a weird bunch of fanatics, aren't we? 
This is the group of people working towards the end of the galaxy, unbeknownst to most of the galaxy. They think we're a benign cult. Oh, we are so much worse than that. But look at how adorable our scientists are. Well, one of our scientists, the other two, once again, Snake Boy and um, Noodle Face. Called Glomper, by the way. <laughs> I love this empire, it's so dumb. Also, we're doing terribly, I've got to be honest. This is by far the most behind I have been in ages. Doomsayer blank has been chosen. Okay, who's that then? Oh, you're not left here. Well, oh, level one as well. You're a terrible leader. I should make sure that I have 200 influence after they get to a certain age. I'm sure under their guidance, things will be fine. The penal colony. The entire world is set aside as a massive penal colony. The vast prison communities are largely self-managed by the prisoners, and punishment often means exile into the unforgiving wilderness. This will reduce crime on all of our planets. Not that's really an issue, but still. I kind of want this just because, you know, maybe some members of our species, of our empire, don't believe that the endgame crisis is truly our salvation. And they need to go somewhere to, um, oh, what's the word? To be educated on the subject, to be, you know, taught right from wrong in a peaceful, loving manner. We're the good guys, but I also really want that, but that's cooler and way more evil. So two things. First of all, you are no longer guaranteeing our independence. That is worrying, but let's see if you're still fr Oh yeah, you love us! That's absolutely fine then, buddy. I understand, I understand. It's because we have been slowly buffing up our military. It's just about high enough now that they're not quite as concerned about us. Now, the arrival. Is it gonna be this one? So what happens here... Is that a world becomes a Gaia world. So this is the atomic clock event. I found it in the very first episode. And this can happen. A 24 planet Gaia world. It's so far away, but we need that. We need it. We need it. Can we? Okay. Um, either we can save up the influence and just jump straight to it. Or we could purchase all the systems along the way, which does make it cheaper each time. But overall, it would be cheaper to just grab the system. But that will take forever, and we're not getting any bonuses until we grab that. And honestly, there are other systems along the way, which I really want. So I think it's best, even though it might take a little bit longer overall, if we just... You know, sort of... Snake our way there. We need that! Ooh, Resort World. I love Resort Worlds. Okay, so this gives bonus immigration pull to all other worlds. And it also increases their amenities, which is our whole shtick. But, there's a hollow temple. It's the temple, but bigger. All the worlds can have a new temple. Temples everywhere. I realise at this point I am way too tired because I am getting really into the theme of this. Hollow temples. Oh, but the resort world. I mean, that's decadence, but that... Temples. But this is a common. That's a rare. Fine, we'll go with the rare option. I'm not happy with that, though. <laughs> so which world am I going to convert into my uh, resort world? It has to be one which has almost no districts already. So I guess... Oh, no, not a 20-size world. It has to be small. Ah, 10. With very few bonuses. Yep, okay, so... This tomb world is going to be our resort world. Oh, of course, that makes perfect sense that... Bit of a visual glitch there in the background. Just half a planet, just, you know, chilling. But it makes complete sense. This is where all the worshippers of the end will come to see what the end is like. This is a tomb world. How beautiful, how wonderful. Look at the ash. Look at how we can't breathe properly. Isn't it glorious? Come one, come all. <laughs> yep, that's... That's what we're going with here. Uh, what do I want to build here? Uh, we do need another agricultural world. That's why I put this food processor down. But now I'm looking at it and thinking, this would be a nice tech world. I'll leave that because I think I'm going to have a mix of tech world and research. So the next district I'll build is food. 
I meant to say a mix of tech world and food. My god, I need some sleep. The resort world is ready and we don't have the ability to build that lovely temple. Well, I'm only mildly annoyed. So what we need to do then is demolish everything, I believe. Uh, penal colony, resort world. Oh, no, it has to be at least 15 in size. Well, I did not know that. That is very annoying, actually. I don't have any other tomb worlds, but I really, really, really want a resort world somewhere. Uh, we could wait until this colony here becomes a thing. I mean, it's 16. It does have a really nice bonus, though. More energy, more physics, but it's not a massive bonus. So, yeah, I guess we'll turn that into the resort world. That's fine. Mission. Well, we now have a commercial pact with these fellows, which I believe are all the way over there. Any chance we could get a migration trip? Oh, so close! By the looks of things, that should eventually give us the migration treaty, purely because we're about to get trust. What's this? After a long and faithful, uh, sorry, fruitful cooperation, we are pleased to finally offer the Children of Crisis Association with the Just Pact. Oh, sure. I mean, I will join a federation. I will just have to break off with them when the endgame crisis occurs, or at least, oh, wait, no. Because then we'll have a truce with them for a while. Uh, that's okay, as long as I go to war as soon as the truce is over. I mean, I'm okay with joining a federation till then. There's no real negatives for me. And this isn't even joining, this is just an um, association, which should give us trust over time as well, so it should keep people nice and happy with us. Which is lovely. Oh, so close. Oh, zero. Come on, it's a little bit. There we go. Migration treaty. We get some more people. Fantastic. There we go. Friendship for everyone. Oh, lovely. Oh, when did you suddenly become so friendly? To I mean, you have been friendly with us for ages, but you haven't been able to do any of these. Why? Why now? Oh, trust. Huzzah for trust. Everyone gets to be our friend. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Look at that. Three migration treaties now. That should help out a lot. Yep, all of our new colonies have 0 0.9 immigration. So if we only had one, that would all be concentrated. So that's giving us an additional one extra point per month. Over four colonies. That's not bad. I assume, though, some of the worlds which are full are still going to be a bit of an issue. But still, that's fantastic. Lovely. That went up from, I think, 0 0.4, so that over doubled. Time to try and bribe a hive mind. Now, although we can't have a migration treaty with these fellows, I'm hoping to grab some of these. System survey complete. Nope, that was completely not worth it at all. What I should have looked is how many other agreements they already have, and apparently that's way too many already. Yeah, I really wanted the research agreement, so... I mean, we're behind on research compared with them, and they already have too many agreements. Yeah, that was never going to happen. But at least they're friendly with us, and now we can go through their borders. That's something, I suppose. Lovely. The Hollow Temple. Time to make our resort world. So all of our other colonies get amenities and immigration pull. This planet gets plus 100% habitability to everyone, and sadly I can't really build anything special on the planet. But still, worth it. Ooh, see, all of these are now locked off. Uh, may as well have a governor. Um, let's go with the psych. Actually, no, the long-lived person. Let's do that. There we are. So there we are, a lovely resort world. Now, I would like to name this world, so if anyone has a good suggestion, feel free to tell me. Evading heretics. That was on 1.2 for like half a second then. Maybe it's because you need more jobs. Oh, hello. Oh, just these fellows. Okay. Just drones. It's just so beautiful. The Hollow Temple is now ours. Uh, let's grab that because it's rare and rare is good. You, Star Fortress, fantastic. Extra housing would be awesome. Yep, let's go with that. That's fine. Now, every planet needs the Hollow Temple upgraded. The problem is the Hollow Temple is incredibly expensive. Thankfully, we have a lot of stuff we can just quickly throw away. So let's just throw all of that. Sorry, lads, but the Hollow Temple is important. So there we are. There we are. There we are. Oh, it's just... It's fantastic. Sorry. 
Sadly, I can't upgrade them until they have the level 2 of the main building. That's fine, so I'm assuming all of these will have to wait. Okay. 300 days, and then hollow temples everywhere. And suddenly loads of workers going from being workers to being priests. We're going to lose a lot of basic resource. Construction complete. Hollow temples everywhere. So let's wait until the end of the month and see how much more unity we're getting. Incoming transmission. One second, fella. Good! Oh, yeah, that hurt a lot of other stuff, but I don't really care. More unity! And more preaching about the end of times. Oh. Huh. Yes, thank you. What a nice chap. Uh, where are you? Finally! Yes! Commercial pact, non-aggression pact, beautiful. Migration is going to be almost impossible because of your empire type, but still, I'm happy with that. Very happy with that indeed. Also, do we only have one planet with a corporate, a corporate building on? No, apparently our neighbours have been very busy. <laughs> oh, they all have them. Giving us more clerks. Oh, they knew us well. Whoa, they've been really busy. How did I not notice that? I am oblivious. We really need this research already, but it's just not popping up. We need to get rid of these sinkholes. So I made the mistake of going to get a drink and forgetting the game wasn't paused yet. So right now, everything, well, almost everything needs to be upgraded. So ignore all of the weirdnesses with the planets. That's just being fixed now. In fact, I think this was really on theme for the Empire. It's a really decadent Empire. I am leading it, and I got distracted by something, and everything turned to ruin. I think that makes complete sense. I also now have our fleet going on a long border patrol all the way from here down to here. Well, I guess it's a bit of a border patrol. Either way, it's just a regular patrol, and as long as they're doing that, we should keep the pirates out of these two systems, although occasionally our allies will destroy the pirates anyway, so it's not too much of a big issue. But with that, I'm afraid I really am all out of time for today's video. It's been loads of fun. I think the Empire is really molding itself into something interesting now. And I'm about to grab the Gaia world at long last. So we'll be grabbing that in the next episode. And hopefully our planets can be a little bit more specialized. We'll get a lot more of the end resources, more sciences, more alloys. And we can start preparing for the end of times. We need a serious bastion here. Here. And probably over here. And we need some serious fleet power. Gateway travel would also be really beneficial, so I am on, on the lookout for that in our sciences. I normally don't build gateways because I just don't go for that type of science, but we really do need them if we're going to be fighting everyone. So, thank you for watching. If you have enjoyed the video, then of course, likes, favourites, shares, comments, all that good stuff helps out me, helps out the channel, and most importantly, shows that Stellaris is a series you wish to see continued in the future. Thank you so, so much for watching, and goodbye.